All right, so let's talk about iPads in 2020. Every video I've ever done about an iPad on this channel has always had a similar kind of vibe. It's like the hardware is awesome, very powerful, the build quality is great, uh, the software improves year on year, but it never felt like it was a device that I could openly recommend to people as being like, hey, this is a device that can be a laptop replacement for most people. Something always felt like it was missing. But this year, Apple brought something to the iPad OS that changes things. They finally brought proper mouse and trackpad support for iPad OS. Now, they've always had some kind of half baked assistive mouse support for iPad OS ever since it launched with iOS 13, but it now feels fully baked. It now feels like something that is an integral part of the operating system. So I'm gonna talk about what it is, just so you have some context of what this mouse support is, but I also wanna talk about the bigger picture of what this means for the ecosystem going forward, for developers and just apps and stuff. So right off the rip, Apple didn't just half-ass this thing. They didn't just you know, throw in a cursor and call it a day. They spent the time to build a proper mouse UI that works well with the existing touch-based interface. And that's the thing that makes this difficult, right? When you have a product that has been touch-based or primarily touch-based ever since its inception, like 10 years ago, it's difficult to throw in a mouse cursor and have it work properly. That's one of the reasons why they took so long to do this, I think, but it's quite good now. So the cursor transforms based on the context. It's limited right now because it's new, but basically if you're floating around doing nothing, it's just a circle. You can click on apps and you can click on websites, but if you're over UI icons, it'll react differently. So if you're over pull down menus, it'll react a certain way. If you're over text, it'll turn into that like vertical text editing cursor. So it's easier to select text and it does take time to get used to, right? It's an unconventional cursor, it changes shape and translucency as you move it around. It's not something that our eyes are used to, so tracking it takes a little bit of time to, to just kind of adapt to it. But once you get it, and like once you understand what Apple's going for, it makes sense and it's just like, it's just a different way of using a cursor on a screen. I will say, for some people that look at this, they're like, they'll be like, this is wrong. This is not how cursors should be. This is not how mice and trackpad should be with computers. You gotta try it it's hard to convey in a video. Like I think if you spend 15, 20 minutes using this, it'll make sense. And the reason why it works is because this, like I said before, was primarily a touch based device. So you can't just throw in a traditional mouse cursor on there and expect it to feel like a proper UI. Okay. So the things that do work very well, I mean, it's, a mouse, it clicks and does things like you would expect. Right clicks work and hovering over content will give you context menus if it supports it. Uh, multitasking is way faster. You can move your menus around very efficiently. There's a lot of supported gestures and stuff just works quite well. You can use either Bluetooth mice or Bluetooth trackpads or even USB connected mice, but basically any kind of workflow where your hands are on a keyboard or just not on the screen and you want to interact with your workspace without lifting up and touching it, it's just way better to have a trackpad or a mouse than to rely on a touch screen. Now, there are certain things that don't work perfectly yet. Uh, for example, there are apps where the cursor should be pixel precise, like say in Photoshop or Procreate, but right now those apps don't have a brush or a tool for the cursor. It's still just the default circle, but I'm sure the developers will update those apps soon. Uh, in Excel, you can't shift click. Like if you wanna drag multiple cells, you have to click that dot in the corner to be able to select multiple cells. And it's something that I'm sure, again, the app developers will fix over time. But I did notice something that may be a bit of a problem. Like a lot of these apps were developed with touch inputs in mind. So say something like Excel, you can't press the different cells super quickly. Like you have to wait in between a little bit. There's a kind of a refractory period before you can click the different cells. And it's great when you have touch inputs because then you can't misclick or double click by accident. But when you're using a mouse, let's say you're very proficient with Excel and you can click quickly, there's still that wait time in between each click. So I think that some apps are gonna have to be updated to be able to take advantage of the faster interaction that mouse users have with their apps. Uh, the other thing I noticed is that even, like this is a kind of like a first generation magic trackpad from Apple, the scrolling doesn't work. Like the, the tracking works perfectly fine, but the vertical scrolling doesn't work. And I don't know if this is something that software can fix, but only certain trackpads can do vertical scrolling right now on the iPad. But the overall experience when you have either a Bluetooth mouse or a trackpad connected to the iPad, it's like, it, it's an experience that rivals the traditional laptop right now. It's different, but it's comparable. Now, the real interest to me is not just the, the connectivity that we're talking about right now. It's 
app development. Like if you think about developers, when they looked at the iPad of like, hmm, should we make an app for the iPad? Should we spend the resources and the effort and the time to make an app for the iPad? And for some developers, that's a really tough decision because the primary method of interaction with this machine is your finger or the Apple Pencil. Like neither of those are ideal when it comes to certain applications. But now, because they have proper support for this stuff, for mice and trackpads, now there's incentive. So let's say you're a developer where your primary app is like on a desktop and you have a huge user base that is used to mice and trackpads as the way of interacting with your app or using your app. Now there's a real incentive to put that app on this thing. You see what I'm saying? Like now your user base can just put it on this iPad and, and they can use it right away. Like there are apps out there like LumaFusion, a video editing app for the iPad. And you know, my friend John from TLD, he uses that thing and he can make full blown, fully edited videos off of an iPad. And it works incredibly well for him, but it's a huge ask for the average user to use that thing with an Apple Pencil. Like, you know, it can be done, but most video editors would prefer this stuff instead of fingers and pencils to chop videos. And this is the magic of support. When Apple supports hardware like this, it just makes developers so much more motivated to put proper apps, professional apps on the iPad. And because the hardware is so powerful, I'm curious to see what developers do. Like there's just so much more potential now that the iPad has proper support for mice and trackpads. Now, if you're someone that wanted the iPad to turn into a Mac, like you just want this thing to run Mac OS with like a full blown, keyboard and trackpad Mac OS, that's not what this is for, right? The iPad will always be an iPad. It's just, this breathes new life into all of the iPads. It gets softer, right? This now has so much more usability, productivity, enjoyability, usability, all of the itties, the iPad. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. See you guys next time.